Steve Jobs had just returned to Apple to run their company. Both Princess Diana and, Prin and Mother Teresa passed away in 1997. Do y'all remember Dolly the Sheep? The first cloned animal? That happened in 1997. Madeleine Albright was the first woman Secretary of State was sworn in during that year, and the Harry Potter books were published for the very first time in the United Kingdom in 1997. The bird flu was a thing, the OJ trial had just happened, and Mike Tyson bit Evander Holyfield in the air. <laughs> All kidding aside, I really did try to find a circumcision joke to throw in here today, but I decided <laughs> I think that Pastor Jesse has told all of the circumcision jokes, so there weren't any left for me to share. Oh no, there's more. There's more? <laughs> well, I'll leave those to him. But we are just so blessed here at Zion to have him with us. I remember the first time that Pastor Jesse and Carol um, came to a Saturday night service. I happened to be, it was when we were still able to sing up front. I happened to be up front singing, and they were sitting right over here. And I remember instantly feeling just the sense of relief to know that we had someone here to shepherd us. It had been a very long few years. My family and I became members um, not long before the world blew up, I guess we could say, here at Zion. And I know personally, I was, I was shaken by that whole experience. And we needed someone who could come in and guide us who could bring us back to a place where we were thriving, and Pastor Jesse has done that for us in his 10 years here. And I know that we are in his first congregation, Prince of Peace in Portland, was blessed to have him before he came here. And we are just, again, just so thankful that this is where he calls home at this point in time. There is one person who has experienced this whole journey with Pastor Jesse, and that is his dear wife, Carol. And if you have not had the pleasure of getting to know Carol, I encourage you to take the time to do so. She is a faithful woman, a devoted wife, and an amazing friend. And I am very honored to ask her to come up here and share a few words with us today. So if you know me, you know this is not where I prefer to be. For if I'm here, I'm also flanked with my fellow singers. Um, but since I was here, at the very beginning, well, almost the beginning, I'm going to start the fame song. You may not know, but Dwayne and I met in his church in September of 1980. No, dear, your secret's safe with me. I'm not going to tell that story. <laughs> he was doing an internship in industrial engineering. We talked about our hopes and our dreams, and he told me at that time that he had been to Trinity Seminary, but apparently ordained ministry was not in his future. Phew! I had dated a young man in college, and he decided to go to seminary, and I said, have a good life, I shall not be a pastor's wife. God has a sense of humor. Fast forward to 1993, January 29th to be exact. How do I know the exact date? Because Aaron, our youngest, was 10 days old. 10 days old. Postpartum. That's the day that Dwayne decided he needed to let me know that God was calling him again 
into ministry in the church. Yep, there was some yelling, some crying, mm -hmm. cursing, the pastor's wife swears, and some fish shaking to heaven. Seven months later, Dwayne enrolled in seminary. Two young boys, Drake and Aaron, three schools for Drake, the sale of one home, a piece of land on a lake, a move to Columbus, CPE in Indianapolis spent living with his sister Jill, Summer Creek, a move to Arlington, Virginia, and another move back to Columbus. And we were ready to serve the church in a way that we hadn't served before. God was faithful to us before we made the decision to go on this journey. And God has continued to be faithful to us these last 25 years. There have been some ups and downs, Ed. There have been some ups and downs along the way, but God has continued to be with us on this journey. To the church, you all, I say thank you. Thank you for giving us this opportunity. Thank you for supporting us as we figure out where God continues to call us. To you, Dwayne, I say well done. Thanks for having the courage to answer God's call. Thanks for including me on this journey. Thanks for being a great example to our children and our grandchildren. Congratulations on 25 years of ordained ministry in the church. My prayer is that God will continue to bless your ministry all the days of your life. ago, Pastor Jesse took a call, and that call was at Prince of Peace Lutheran Church in Cortland, Ohio, and one of our members here was part of that call committee. It was 25 years ago, and he has agreed to come up and share a little bit of that information with us. Please welcome Ed Bellin up front as he shares about Pastor Jesse's first call. Last week, I'm going to remember what happened last week. 
And he says, that was the day of my, what do we call it? Coordination, I hope. Coordination. <laughs> and I said, Pastor, you've got a good memory, just like you saw there. He says, no, not really. Carol reminded me this morning. <laughs> Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. The little church up north, okay, Prince of Peace Lutheran Church, back in 1997, was in dire need of a full-time pastor. So we organized a call committee. Who here has ever been on a call committee? See some hands going up there? You know what it's like. You know what a tough job that might be. So we organized our committee. We called, I guess, about eight members of the committee, various expertise throughout the congregation. And we sat down and said, what are we really looking for in a pastor? So we listed all the points that we wanted to look for in a pastor coming from Prince of Peace. And then the committee decided to, what questions are we going to ask any person coming in to interview for the job related to each one of those points? So we had this great long list of questions interrogate <laughs> so I called the Senate office by the way I was in this committee anyway I called the Senate office and the Senate office said we got three candidates for you we got two men and one woman three candidates I don't know if they got candidates available today in those numbers or not but we had three available candidates at that time so I got on the phone and called the first candidate and guess who the first candidate was I don't know how, I think God was leading us and guiding us, but it was Woody Jesse. Okay, so he came in, we had a couple meeting him, coming into court, and I think Gerald, you were with him at the time. And this couple took Wayne and Gerald around the big city of Portland, pointing out all the hot spots. <laughs> then they took him out to dinner, I think it was the 422 on the strip. And then we went back to the church and had our Interrogation for Pastor Jesse. And I must have been about five hours later. Yeah. <laughs> I forget. It was a long interrogation. And we released them to go home. And I asked him again, I said, Well, what do you think? Thumbs up or thumbs down? And the committee members all had thumbs up. I didn't see a thumb down. One of the committee members said, Ed, so let's forget about interviewing these other two candidates. We want Jesse. We want Jesse. I was like Pharaoh, you know, the children of Israel were asking for being led out of the desert. I said, no, no, no. I says, we have an obligation. We have an obligation to the Senate office. We have an obligation to the other two candidates. Let's continue interviewing them until our job is done, which we did. And then we compared all the pros and cons of each one of the candidates came up with the bottom line, which was still, we want Jesse. <laughs> so we took that to the church council. The church council voted unanimously to take it to the congregation. The congregation was informed. We wanted to call and what the high points and the weak points may have been, but the congregation voted unanimously to call Pastor Jesse as our full-time pastor at Prince of Peace Lutheran Church in Portland, Ohio. So then I got on the phone that Sunday afternoon, made a phone call to Jesse's, let them know what occurred. <laughs> I'll always remember that phone call. Got on the phone, I started talking, said who I was, you know, why I'm calling, and so on. But I couldn't hear a thing in the background. I thought my phone was dead. I didn't hear a beep. It was a deafening silence. Until I got to the bottom line and said, Pastor Jesse, Prince of Peace Lutheran Church in Portland, Ohio, would like to call you as our full time pastor, starting immediately. And then the cheers erupted. I had to take that phone away from my ear. It was great. You were what, eight years old? And Aaron was four, maybe? These guys were cheering their father on, and Carol was cheering her husband on. Saying, so happy to, to hear the good news. Anyway, that began our relationship for the next 15 years of ministry in Portland, Ohio. 
I'd like to thank the celebration committee for having me say a few words related to the little church up north. And I'd like to personally thank Pastor Jesse for his spiritual guidance and his pastoral ministry to me and my family for the last 25 years. Thank you. And I pray to God that he will continue to bless your ministry here at Zion for many years to come. Thank you. Next, I would like to invite Mr. Don LaFleur up front, who's going to share a little bit about the call to Zion. sermon series, Bible study, and ability to interpret theology has expanded our minds. Your creative energy, your creativity has helped us to deal with the COVID-19 pandemic and showed us new ways to worship. Your ministry has made Christ known to us through your presence. Thank you for all of that. You uh, continue day by day to lead us and pastor us, and we appreciate that greatly. May God continue to bless and guide you as you continue your ministry for many years to come. We thank you, and we extend you and Carol and the family many, many years of good health and happiness. And on behalf of the Pastoral Search Committee, and the congregation here at Zion, a well-deserved thank you. At this time, I would like to invite Janine Hankey up front, who is our school administrator. Um, if you don't know, Pastor Jesse not only oversees the workings of the church here, but he is also the executive director of our fantastic preschool and daycare program downstairs. And um, we have a little something that we're going to give to you here in a moment from the school. But before that, I would like to ask Janine to share a few words. Good morning. I think that Stephanie kind of what I was going to say a little bit, but my name is Janine Hankey, and I'm the 
administrator of the Early Learning Center here at Zion, and I'm glad to be a part of this special recognition for you today, Pastor. During Pastor Jesse's time at Zion, I've been fortunate to work one-on-one -on -one with him. Pastor Jesse, as Stephanie said, not only serves as the pastor for the church, but also serves as our executive director for the school as well. He puts all of his heart and soul into his work for the church and school, and I am immensely grateful for all that he does and all that he continues to accomplish. Genuine care is displayed in all his actions and words. When Pastor came on, his words toward I were raising the bar. He has held himself to the standard from the beginning of his time here until now. So today, I also say to you, Pastor, well done. Today, I would like to present to you a wonderful gift created by our children and teachers to remind you that you display the qualities of a proper servant to Jesus that works hard even when he is unsure of when his master may return. I am so happy that you and Carol have found your home at Zion. Enjoy this blessed day, and thank you for everything. Congratulations on 25 years. So each kid in the center had a hand, literally, in creating this. Their fingerprints are the color of this poster, this, this canvas for you pastors. Beautiful. I'll put this in my office. <laughs> now don't go anywhere. There's more things. Chatham is our president of church council and is here today to present pastor with several gifts. Um, you may, do you want to see what's inside there? <laughs> so the first item he is opening is a Bible. Which, <laughs> we know that you have probably several, but this one is of significance for us, so we wanted to give this to you. The cover of this Bible has uh, imprinted on it, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Oh, it's even got my name on it here. <laughs> and inside it's inscribed for the 25th anniversary of my ordination. Thank you. That's very special. And this is... This is... A cool little mug that has a fun little pastoral saying on it, because, you know... I have to have a little bit of humor, especially with our morning cups of coffee or whatever. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> it says, yes, I am a pastor. No, that last sermon was not specifically about you. <laughs> This is a plaque um, that we would like to share with you today that celebrates your 25th year of ordained ministry. And in there is also an envelope with a gift from not just our congregation, but also the congregation of Friends of Peace in Portland that we jointly give to you. And thank you so very much for all that you have done to bring the word of Jesus Christ to this community. Oh so, congratulations, Pastor Jesse, on 25 fantastic years. <laughs> I would like Carol and Andre to come up here. 
just like to add my uh, personal take on that. Uh, how did I get to this place? I remember when I was less than five, collecting the bulletins after each service at Peace Lutheran Church in Fort Wayne and storing them in a cabinet in my bedroom because one day I was going to be a pastor. I didn't know you couldn't reuse bulletins. <laughs> I couldn't read yet. Move on. Uh, I was always active in my Lutheran church. The church has always fed my spirit and my soul. Uh, there, uh, from about the time of middle school or maybe a little earlier than that, um, God made God's presence um, aware in my life, and I have never doubted the existence and the presence of God in my life since then. Yes, uh, my pastor back in high school uh, recommended that I go to seminary or the military. I chose to go back to engineering school. <laughs> I did go to uh, Trinity Lutheran Seminary one time to visit a, uh, a member of the church who was in seminary because my pastor thought I should. And uh, he showed me his Greek and Hebrew books, and I said, I'll stick with engineering. Uh, but the, the seed that was planted never left me alone. And so there were times in my previous career when uh, I felt like I was being called into the ministry and then something would happen and, uh, and I would be relocated, transferred, promoted, whatever it was, and uh, that would sustain me for another year or two. And then the same nagging sense would come back. And uh, finally, in whatever that year was, 1993, I guess. September 20, or uh, January 29th, yeah. My timing has always been impeccable. <laughs> I, I told Carol that I felt it was uh, it was just something that I was not I was going to have to deal with at that time, and so yeah, we had to talk and um, we committed to pray about it. There were some swearing. <laughs> we committed to pray about it, and uh, I prayed that that I would be able to discern God's call if that's indeed what it was. Carol prayed that it was the wrong number. <laughs> we went to Trinity Lutheran Seminary later that summer because when I called the uh, admissions guy at Trinity, he said, you really need to come here. And I said, well, I've been there before. Uh, I know what it looks like. And he said, no, you really need to come. We need to talk. And so we left uh, Greg and Aaron with Carol's parents, and we went they were there. I do remember them playing on the floor. And uh, we had a little tour of the seminary, which during the summer is not a place to be because there's no classes in session. There's nobody around. It was weird. But we were there. And uh, Brad Key, who was the director of admissions, he's a pastor in the Lutheran Church, he asked Carol and I questions that we had not had the nerve to ask each other. And uh, I think we prayed a little bit then. And on the way home, or back to her house, her parents' house, I believe that's what it was, she said, maybe we should consider doing this sooner rather than later. She said, do you think that you could be ready in a year? Okay, we'll try that. And then, uh, I don't remember the exact date, but uh, I got fired from my job in uh, late August in a reorganization of the company that just didn't need me anymore. And uh, I was devastated, and there were unkind words said. And my father-in-law mother-in-law came that very weekend and I met them outside and I said uh, I just want you to know that I lost my job and it was Dale who said good now you can go to seminary and 
and uh, I had not given that uh, that thought had not occurred to me. <laughs> and I said, gee, I don't know. I mean, as class starts in like a week, that wasn't true. Maybe two weeks. And so. We came with a lot of baggage. <laughs> and uh, so I, I called Brad Gee back at the seminary, who I met in July. And uh, he said, boy, I don't know if we can get you in or not. There are all these hoops you have to jump through before you can be admitted. And I said, well, I'm on ice for a year if we don't try. So we tried. I got, you have to have letters from the bishop. You have to have letters from your pastor. You have to have letters from members of the congregation that you're a member of. And, you have to go through a psychological exam. Uh, I made it. <laughs> and uh, I got all that stuff submitted, and yet I was not accepted. In uh, orientation happened, and uh, I went to orientation, and I laid out a fleece. If you know the story of Jacob, you know, Jacob and Jacob's ladder, he lays out a fleece, and if there's dew on it in the morning, it means uh, Affirmative. If there's no dew on, the, on it in the morning, it's a, a negative. So uh, I kind of laid out a piece, metaphorically speaking, and said, if I'm accepted by the time orientation is done, I'll be back on Monday. If not, I'll go on with my life. Went through orientation, met a lot of nice professors and, and folks who would be my classmates, and orientation ended, and uh, I was up in Poinonia, which is a gathering space, and uh, I had not been accepted. And so I was just going to quietly leave. And then uh, Dr. Lynn Nakamura, who was uh, the chair of the uh, acceptance committee, yelled to me, I did not, had not met her yet. And she said, are you Dwayne Jesse? And I said, yes. And she said, I have your acceptance right here. And so I made plans to go back on Monday. However, I went home in Michigan and in a lake lot and uh, car payments and house payments and two kids and a wife and six cats. <laughs> and yet, uh, for the next four years, uh, well, actually, for the first two quarters, I would travel back and forth between Michigan and uh, Jackson, Michigan and Columbus, live with my in-laws in the evening, go back and forth to the seminary, and, uh, and that was rough. And Michigan, the town we lived in in Michigan was kind of like a uh, uh, not doing very well automotive town. And so selling the house was a real problem for us. And so uh, after two quarters of doing that commute thing, uh, we decided that Our future together was more important than pursuing this alone. So uh, we left our house. We moved out, and uh, Carol and the boys moved into Mary's student housing at the seminary, and the house sat empty until it eventually did sell, thanks be to God. And uh, then we made it through the rest of the seminary. Yes, our internship was in Arlington, Virginia, so we moved yet again, uh, and then uh, we waited toward the end of uh, our fourth year to be called. Um, I was on the admissions committee my senior year, and uh, Dr. Wally Taylor was also on the admissions committee, and uh, he asked me toward the end, I might have been the last uh, candidate that we worked on, and he said, well, how has it been for you? And I said, you know, if I never receive a call, I have enjoyed this trip, and I'm a better Christian today than I ever was before. And if I don't get a call, I'm going to be a great layperson in a church somewhere. That really uh, was how I felt. And then Ed called. Ed called. And he called, and he said, his first words were, Hi, uh, I'm Ed Dolan. You don't even know who I am, do you? Well, yes, I did. <laughs> I was thrilled to begin that journey. And it was the first person I knew up here in uh, Northwest Ohio, North 
case to Ohio. And um, not the first person I met, and it was the Paisies who actually took Carol and I around. But uh, I think that was that the second or third interview. It's only the second. And uh, so we had been sent to other places, one other place first, and then it was not a great match. But uh, after that evening with the call committee, we knew that we felt called there. Um, I'm going to tell you that uh, the call to be a pastor is a holy call. Not everyone is called to do it. I'm not saying that to say that I'm somehow uh, more special than you. I'm not. I just have a different vocation than you. Uh, I have tried to live that out being very transparent. That's why sometimes I get emotional. Sometimes. Not very often. But I have not done this alone. Carol has been beside me all the way, always supporting me, always supporting you. And Drake is going to be the representative of the family today. Uh, he was, do you remember me not being in seminary? No, not much. No, he was just a little tiger. And uh, Aaron would remember even less since he's four years younger. He's not with us today, as far as I know. <laughs> and, uh, hey, this thing has been off the rails all day, I don't know. But, uh, ministry in the church is a family commitment. And so there were many, many days, many evenings where uh, I said goodbye to the family and came to a, a meeting in the church here or at Prince of Peace or even St. John in Champion. It's just that there are a lot of demands on that wine enough to say there are, and so these folks behind me have been there to support me all the way, and uh, I give thanks to God for uh, my salvation, first of all, thanks to God for the call to ministry, it's been the most meaningful thing, the most valuable thing I've ever done in my life, uh, I thank God for the folks at Prince of Peace who called me into ministry, if, you, if you're not aware of it, you can get a, a Master's of Divinity from a seminary, but that doesn't make you a pastor. It's not until you're called that you get that title. And then, uh, thank God for all of you that have supported me and whom I have been able to do ministry with. But uh, I also give thanks to Carol, who's been my partner through it all. Excuse me. And uh, my boys, who have also been right beside me through it all and have, uh, you know, lived with uh, times when I couldn't be there. So, thanks. Thank you. And thank you.
By the way, that song was sung after the vote was taken and I was called to be your pastor. <laughs> if the vote had not gone well, I don't know what you'd have been singing. <laughs> now what? All right. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, we give you thanks for the call to ministry that each one of us have felt. You call us to be disciples first and foremost. And we all have varied gifts and abilities, and we give you thanks for that. We give you thanks for this great church that has led so many people to faith and has nurtured the faith of so many for over 200 years. I am just a small blip on that timeline. But we give you thanks for every soul that is here, every soul that has passed through this place, and those especially who will come to know you through this place. Now we pray as we continue to celebrate today that you would bless the food that we are about to enjoy, those who have prepared it, that we'd all be nourished for service in your kingdom. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. 